sort of landing where we are, right? We're in a sub drainage of the Hudson River Valley that about 40 to 50,000 years ago was under glacial ice. And the end of the ice age is also definitive for our species because it's when we transition from being paleolithic hunter-gatherers to beginning to do this thing called domestication of plants and animals, right? We can fret about certain communities to the end of the day, but meanwhile, we haven't shut down nukes, we haven't shut down coal, we haven't gotten off of our dependency on petroleum. And here we are putting vast amounts of mental energy into getting uptight about plants. I just can't entertain it psychologically. What, right. I, and what I'm saying is on larger acreage, like mm. this kind of property. This morning I was talking about choose your battles wisely. That's part of what I'm getting at. Always, to me, the best way to teach this stuff is for a particular place, for a particular project. And realistically, I would lead workshops implementing any of it that you wanted to, like six to 15 people, you know, build 10 platforms, build summer kitchen, put in rain catchment systems. If you guys just stage materials, have a labor force, and we advertise it as like a weekend or a five-day class and we do stuff like put in a rain tank, create a summer kitchen, create a rain garden, and build an outdoor shower and we've got integrated passive solar hot water, like a black metal tank, put it in a little mini greenhouse and face it out. You yeah, ever see the ones where they put a, a vacuum tube oh, yeah. inside a, oh yeah? Yeah, the evacuated tube ones are yeah. real high efficiency. Like you're trying to direct surface water through runoff ditches. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. The digester, the goats, the off-grid well, classroom. That. So if you don't have healthy soil, you're not going to have healthy plants. If you have healthy plants, they do a better job of resisting against bugs and stuff, and you need less uh, inputs because the plants take care of themselves. Yes, you could patch cut up here, which in forestry means clear cut, like an acre or two, and replant it. But the permaculture finesse is to say, first, cut that, that mud board down by the farmhouse, reclaim any area that's easily reclaimed that right now has kind of been overgrown, and start planting your forest garden there. So now we can take those steep, rocky areas and start to be positive stewards of them and protect them and connect more of them to each other. Aldo Leopold says the best way to heal a damaged ecosystem is to reconnect it to more of itself. So the land use concept there is where we see intact vestiges of old ecologies. We protect them, put them under conservation easements, and then we advocate measures to create corridors that connect them to each other. So looking at like how do we find the intact vestiges that are coming back and getting mature and turning into oak, beech, hickory canopies, where should those be? Steep, rocky slopes, riparian zones. That pattern we'll find does not cut us out of the mix. 